Arab dawn. Arab youth and the demographic divided they will bring. That's interesting. Right. Uh oh. <laughs> Divin. Okay. Uh, we have the author of the book correcting me. And she's a professor, so she's allowed to, and That's right. even if she the, wasn't. It comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. And yeah. did you see how nice she was when she did that? She wasn't, uh, what do you mean you're saying the name of my book improperly, okay? <laughs> the Arab youth and the demographic dividend they will bring. Okay, hi, this is Paul Sackis, Good News Planet. I'm here at the U.S. Arab Business Summit 2015. I'm with Dr. Besma Momani. Yay! And the reason why I'm so excited to have an opportunity to speak with you uh, is that on a panel that was built around the concept of media and media, the evolution from traditional to social, and the continued global impact, track one, room, Lincoln Hall, second floor here, where the Union uh, building here in Manhattan, there's a lot of stuff going on. Union League, gorgeous place. There's so many things happening, especially in the media. Now, is media going to help us or not going to help us? What do you think overall? Can it help us? It can. I mean, I think it's a great equalizer in many ways. I mean, when you think about the concentration of media, we suddenly have citizen journalists who are able to effectively get the voices of many who have never made it on mainstream media. So I think it's a wonderful opportunity and, and thing. Um, but we're no, there's no shortage of information. We're now at the phase where we're inundated with information. Um, we, need no, we need more curators, in fact. If we're talking about uh, the role of social media, it's a wonderful tool, but there's a lot of noise and how to filter out that noise is going to be, I think, the next big thing in, in terms of how do you find the trusted information um, that you know not only is verifiable, but more importantly, isn't just junk. Because we're, we are going to be faced with more options. We, we have more TV channels, more radio stations, more internet sites, too much information coming our way. And a way to organize that is going to be an important part of making sure that we get what we want in terms of the information, but also to ensure that the junk is filtered out. You know, uh, and with that in mind, and that the right information gets to the uh, world and to the consumer, um, you know, it was the comments that you initially started uh, this uh, panel with. You were the first speaker. And you shared very important information, I felt, uh, for our audience and I think for the world. Um, and that was really, the, since this is an Arab uh, a, uh, summit, and the word ISIL came up, not ISIS, ISIL, and you had mentioned a number, and numbers always make people say, what is, what do you mean number? So, and you had said something like 50, there are 50,000 or so ISIL uh, members, or, uh, yeah. uh, and so, and I remember one time when I interviewed like one of the heads of CNN mm -hmm. uh, years ago, and he said, you know, there's only 100,000 Taliban. All right, so I for years have been saying, to many people, but there's only 100,000 Taliban, and now you're saying there's only 50,000, and I think there's like seven point something billion uh, kind, of, kind, of, kind of people out there. So are we talking about a very small group that seems with regard to the media that gets a lot of voice? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, in, in some way, it's understandable because their crimes are so horrific. They're able to effectively get and garner the attention that they want. But we do give them more credit than they deserve in the sense that, you know, there are, there are more car accidents, there are more pedestrians killed than ISIS will ever kill in, in the United States or other parts of the world. It's not to say that nothing can be done or that we shouldn't do anything. I think there's an important value to that, um, but we do pay a lot of attention to it, um, and partly because I think we um, we are attracted to bad news. I mean, you know, your show is really interesting because it, it it's really flipping the news on its head. Uh, we are attracted to bad news. We are inundated with bad news and then the cat rescue, and it seems to be that that's what's all that's offered to us on, on our television sets, and um, it's a reality of, of uh, a, a very dense market of lots of news sources competing, and and so they ratchet up as much as they can, that hysteria that uh, unfortunately does get them ratings. Yeah, no doubt about it. So, uh, but we do have choices and we're working hard to uh, uh, create another choice with good news, positive, life-affirming content. And so tell us about your book, because this is, I, I, I venture to say, Arab Dawn, 
uh, is good news. And there's a beautiful picture of you. And you're a associate professor at the University of Waterloo Department of Political Science. All right. That's right. So, I mean, my book is really saying that, you know, we don't give Arab youth credit. When we think about Arab youth, we sort of get these images, these media images of all the wrong things, you know, these young, frustrated men. And that's not the Arab region. The Arab world is actually comprised of cosmopolitan, entrepreneurial, uh, more progressive than ever, people of faith, without a doubt. This is not to say that they're not people of faith. And so they have a fusion of identities that we don't understand or that we don't give credit in the sense that that is a, 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 a society that is much more pluralist than we, we assume it to be. They're more tolerant of each other than we assume it to be. And we're just getting a sliver of the news that I think unfortunately paints them all in a negative brush without really understanding who are the Arab youth? What are they, you know, do we know the fact that the vast majority of them today are, are more educated than their parents have ever been? Do we know that there are rates of entrepreneurship that's one of the highest in the world? That women are exceeding men in university education? Um, you know, we have this image of the oppressed female Arab woman. It's quite contrary. They're very much empowered in the sense that they are one of the most um, educated forces in their society. Um, and they, you know, if you go down to the Arab household, women are important, powerful figures in their own households. But we don't give them credit for all of the successes that they have, both at home and in broader society. So if this story was on the front page of all the newspapers. It sure as heck could make a lot of people feel a lot better. Yeah. Do you think? Absolutely. I think. I mean, a hundred percent. Listen to all this good news that we're hearing, right, yeah. from you. I think anybody who's visited the Middle East, you know, I always I always come um, by people who say, oh, I just came back from a trip to Jordan or Morocco or Egypt or uh, Lebanon. What a beautiful place. It's nothing like the news. And that's that's the reality. The reality is, you know, we do have a very, str a very uh, uh, small um, information base of, of what comes to us from the Middle East. And unfortunately, it doesn't highlight the reality of everyday life, which is just as boring as everybody else's everyday life. <laughs> We are all one, as uh, as we speak about very often. And was it you that mentioned that uh, the YouTube that more people from Saudi Arabia it's the number one uh, uh, uploader of content onto Absolutely. YouTube? Absolutely. No, no, who would know that? No, these comedy, are... comedy in the Arab world. Who would have thunk? <laughs> What's good news for you? Good news for me is um, just the reality that uh, people that live very boring lives and um, their mundane existence is something to be celebrated. And there's a lot of people living boring lives out there. I'm crazy about you. You really got it together in my in my way of thinking that life is good and people are good and kind and loving and caring and uh, not looking to punch anybody in the nose. Now, with that in mind, we're very involved with world peace. Yeah. We create peace events and have have been for uh, since 2002 uh, uh, per the United Nations International Day of Peace. 193 countries agreed to a day of peace. So September 21st is the day they agreed, and we're throwing a party. And so we've been uh, we had Times Square, Central Park, uh, downtown Brooklyn, and other places all the world. Canada had some things going, and everywhere else. And they say now 610 uh, million uh, people know about it. By next year, 1.6 billion people will know about it. So. We ask everybody, and I actually wrote a little book here, and amazed that I did it, but I did it. Uh, what does peace mean to you? So, what does peace mean to you? Peace means to me the acceptance of diversity in all its forms. Um, it's a recognition that we would live in a very boring planet if we were all the same. Beautiful. All right. Thanks so much for sharing. Where can people get your book? Do you have a website? It's on Amazon. All righty. And... Uh, um, and you have a website as well? I do. It's uh, www.uwaterloo.ca backslash squiggly bimo manny. It's a long one. Just <laughs> Google so cool. Me. All right. Well, we're going to put down some text so make it easier for everybody Fantastic. as well. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, Paul.